Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Faik Yagazai from BDP, the Kurdish party or party which espouses Kurdish rights in Turkey. He is located in Brussels. He is here in India to talk about various issues, including Ocalan's freedom, which currently is still not been granted in spite of the fact there has been a peace agreement that the PKK and Ocalan have agreed to with the Turkish government. Faik, good to have you with us and hope to see you more in India on this issue. Thank you very much for inviting me here. And we hope that we'll be here more and raise the awareness of Kurdish people and Kurdish question here in India. Ocalan is of course a familiar name in India because the international press also covers Ocalan, the fact that he was arrested, he was put in prison and has been there for quite some time. There has been some negotiations between the Turkish government and Ocalan and there has been the announcement of a peace process and peace negotiations. Why is it that Ocalan is still in jail, even though supposedly he is representing the Kurdish formation, the PKK, the key one, which is involved in these negotiations? Yeah, it's uh, the contradiction, uh, really, that he is leading the Kurdish people and now there are negotiations between the Kurdish movement, the PKK and the Turkish state. And the leader of one side is in prison while they are negotiating. While the other side, the Turkish side, has uh, its own organizations dealing with this issue. But Öcalan alone in one island prison and negotiating with Turkish state. Is he able to consult the PKK comrades or other sections of the Kurdish people while doing this, holding these negotiations or is he isolated still? He's isolated and um, he has only very limited opportunity to inform uh, his people or uh, Kurdish people, uh, uh, BDP and the PKK about what's going on there. So that's, wh that's uh, why we say that he should be free in order to have a really uh, peaceful uh, solution for Kurdish question after these negotiations. One of the issues that comes up repeatedly was, is that are you demanding a separate Kurdistan or are you talking about Kurdish rights within Turkey, an autonomous, with certain autonomies, certain ethnic and cultural linguistic rights? So what is the position of PKK? At the moment, is it for a separate Kurdistan or is it within Turkey asking for certain democratic rights, cultural rights and language rights? Yeah, we Kurdish people are one of the oldest nations in the world, uh, more than 5,000 years that we are living in Mesopotamia, in Kurdistan. And then our country was divided into four between Turkey, Iraq, Iran and Syria. And of course, Kurdish people also have the right to have its own nation state as all other nation states in the world. But we believe that struggling for freedom, democracy, the rule of law and human rights is more important than fighting for a separate nation state. That's why that uh, before the PKK started fighting for an independent, united, socialist Kurdistan, but then uh, they changed the strategy and they uh, asked for freedom and democratic autonomy status for all parts of Kurdistan within the existing borders, but democratic system in all region, Middle East and all of the world. So what you're really asking for right now yes. is that the countries within which this Kurdi, Kurdish population are there should be democratic and they should have certain democratic rights and certain autonomies within the existing borders. Yeah, That's exist. the current exactly, uh, position. Exactly the position is this. We say that uh, Kurdish people should have the right to have education in Kurdish language because our language is now forbidden, still forbidden at schools, in uh, uh, state institutions. So and that's true for Turkey or is it true for also Iran? For, is it also true uh, for, for Syria? All, for all, apparently now the situation in Iraq is a little bit different because after the collapse of Saddam's regime, they had a new constitution, which is a federal system. And now Kurdistan is a part of this federal system. They have their own 
parliament or government and all their own uh, uh, educational system, administrative system, etc. But in three other parts of Kurdistan, it's still forbidden to have education in Kurdish language, to exercise their uh, culture, to exercise our identity freely, and to, to have uh, authority on our uh, local uh, regions. So let me, let me get this straight. Kurdish population in Turkey would be roughly about 20 million out of uh, 80 million. So at least one fourth of the Turkish population is Kurdish in their identity. Now, this are, are, even today, you would say they don't have the right to speak uh, their language. They don't have the right to be educated in Kurdish language. Yes, yes. It, um, indeed, uh, it was ex exactly forbidden uh, before to even speak Kurdish language publicly. But it's impossible to, um, to uh, forbid it in a house that uh, you speak with your children or your mother or your father. But um, uh, recently, after a very uh, long struggle of Kurdish people, now there are some changes that uh, they have um, some Kurdish courses. They have loads some Kurdish courses. Uh, now there is a uh, state television which is broadcasting in Kurdish but uh, propaganda for the state and uh, but at least in Kurdish language in Kurdish language at least it's in Kurdish language and now they are discussing to give Kurdish people to have an optional lessons at schools to choose and to learn Kurdish which of course it's uh, tragic to have optional lessons in your mother uh, land to only learn your language but don't have the right to have education in your own language. 20 million Kurdish people should have to get education in Kurdish language otherwise you can't stop the assimilation of assimilation of the people. If you don't have education in your own language and if you have so many pressure coming from the uh, dominant uh, system then uh, many of our people uh, will be assimilated and this uh, language uh, will die at the end. So it's very important for us to have education in Kurdish. What are the other issues on which the Kurdish people are discriminated against in Turkey? On which, which are the other demands you have apart from the language rights? What are the other demands that you would have in, in Turkey? Indeed, uh, we want a democratic system, first of all for all Turkey, not only for all Turkey, but for all other uh, states. But Turkey claims it's democ democracy, it allows votes, it allows uh, certain civil liberties, it claims. Uh, so what's wrong with this democracy uh, that Turkey indeed, has? Indeed, democracy is not only voting. Democracy is participation. But in Turkey, the participation is uh, not enough to have a democratic system. So, um, uh, indeed, we, uh, as Kurdish party in Turkey, we demand for more rights for minorities, for religions, for oppressed groups of the society, for women. Um, uh, environment is a very important issue for us because now our country is being flood, flooded by, the, uh, uh, by building the, the dams. So... Um, the other thing that we have to uh, write to communicate with the other parts of Kurdistan. So uh, now there are uh, borders with mines, uh, wires, soldiers, etc. And even I, I'm living uh, in a town which is on the border of Syria. Half of the town is in Syrian side and half of the town is in Turkey side. I have a lot of relatives in Syria, but unfortunately I cannot communicate them. So we have uh, more um, relations with other parts of Kurdistan. So that's why we need a democratic system in all Middle East, in all region, not only for Turkey, but for Syria, for Iraq, for Iran, and for all other uh, countries. Well, Turkey has been very aggressively pursuing a certain policy in Syria. In fact, as you must be aware of, it has been behind a lot of the uh, attacks against Assad, supporting it, 
supporting certain fundamentalist groups in Syria. So do you see that as a long-term threat to Turkey itself, apart from the fact that obviously it's a threat to Syria? And recently it has been a threat also to the Kurdish region in Syria, where some of these militant groups, the, particularly the Jabahat al-Nusra, has committed yeah. what is now being accepted as a massacre of uh, a Kurdish population. About 300 people have been killed recently. Yeah. Uh, you know, Turkey um, is a very uh, unitarian and very uh, centralized system. And uh, from the foundation of Turkey, it has a character, very nationalistic character of Turkish. And they do not accept the existence of all others. And now, if we, ha we have had a uh, Kurdish uh, autonomy region in Iraqi Kurdistan, and if we have one in Syria, then they cannot keep 20 million Kurdish people uh, in Turkey in this uh, status. So they are afraid of uh, an autonomy status in Syria that it will um, uh, uh, make pe Kurdish people in Turkey to have the same rights. They are afraid of this, but they can't see the, the, uh, the bigger danger that if there is a system of these Islamic, uh, radical Islamic groups on the border of Turkey, it will be more dangerous for the secular system of Turkey. But unfortunately, this now the go governing party is coming from Islamic roots. And because of this uh, character, they are cooperating with these groups. But we believe that it is more dangerous uh, for this um, secular system than because we don't want to uh, divide Turkey or have an independent state. And uh, have, we have want only democracy, democratic system, respect for the others and more decentralized system. But uh, Turkey do not see this, uh, unfortunately. So you see this support to the uh, Syrian uh, fundamentalist groups as a long-term threat to Turkey itself. That's the way. Of course, it of course, translate. not only for Turkey, but also for all the region, all the and region. even for all um, for Europeans or Americans who are now supporting these uh, groups. There is some coming together of different Kurdish groups to cooperate with each other and start talking about uh, fraternal relations, solidarity. And not just, you know, United Kurdistan as it used to be earlier, but really trying, trying to talk about autonomous regions in each of the state. How do you see this developing? Because there is now, uh, as you said, an autonomous, uh, relatively autonomous Iraqi Kurd uh, Kurdish uh, population, relatively autonomous Syrian Kurdish population in the middle of the civil war going on in Syria. So how do you see all this develop? Yeah, it's an historical uh, thing that Kurdish people now are... Uh, cooperating among each other and the Kurdish political parties, Kurdish personalities, democratic institutions, uh, civil organizations from all parts of Kurdistan are coming together and having their national conference uh, in this month and it's really in the history it is for the first time that all Kurdish people are united and we will discuss about our future. And I hope that there will be more respect internationally for this unity of the Kurdish people. And we will show the world that the Kurdish unity is not a threat to the regional states or to the international big powers. Or the existing borders. borders yeah. The last question I have is what is your relation to the democratic forces in Turkey? Because as we have seen in Taksim Square, uh, there has been a huge upsurge of popular uh, movements against particularly Erdogan's policies. Yeah. And with that, do you think there is a possibility of a democratic upsurge, which will also include the Kurdish people yeah. in this, yeah. against the specific things that you said, the unitary nature and the repressive yeah. nature of the Turkish state, and particularly its attempt now to give it a religious identity? Yeah. As I said, we are not a separatist movement. Uh, we are a democratic movement. And we want democracy for all Turkey and freedom for Kurdish people within this democracy. So that's why we are all cooperating with democratic forces in Turkey. 
and we really um, encourage them to um, support our uh, our our struggle. Even we um, we uh, supported them in the elections to have some members in the parliament uh, by the support of our voters uh, in Turkish cities. Now we have. Turkish members in the parliament, we have Assyrian members in the parliament, we have uh, Alevites members in the parliament. So we Kurdish movement now is leading democratic uh, struggle, democratic movement for all of Turkey. Did you also build up support for the Taksim Square movement in Diyarbakir and other places? Yes, yes we did because we believe that uh, this, this oppressive uh, system uh, should be democratized. And our member of parliament started that initiative in Taksim Square. Yes, some nationalists wanted to use this against the government to collapse the government and have uh, even a uh, military system in Turkey. We did not support this group. The Kemalist past. Yes, we back. did not support these groups. But we supported the real sincere struggle which was against this oppressive system and we were a part of these uh, demonstrations. Thank you very much Faik. It's been good to have you with us and we hope that the peace process that has started in Turkey, particularly with Ocalan and PKK, continues and is successful. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.